there is one segment that just isn't talked about enough specifically i'm talking about the budget tablet segment specifically those that cost rupees 20000 or less up until now there was no decent tablet under rupees 20000 whatever we had available had one or the other issues for example you get samsung galaxy tab a 10.1 for rupees 12000 triple nine but it only has a meager 2GB RAM and 32GB ROM. I mean, it's 2024 and even the cheapest of smartphones have at least 4 or 6GB RAM. Next up, we have the Redmi Pad featuring a 2K 90Hz display but still only has 4GB RAM. And then we have the Lenovo Tab M10 with only 6GB RAM. So, no tablet in under Rs 20,000 was able to hit that sweet combination of 8GB RAM and 128GB storage. As a result, OnePlus saw this opportunity and seized it with a tablet which has all the necessary features and the sweet combination of 8GB RAM and 128GB storage. Meet the OnePlus Pad Go. So the OnePlus Pad Go comes in three variants, one with only Wi-Fi, one with Wi-Fi and 4G and the top spec one with Wi-Fi, 4G and 256GB storage. But in my opinion, getting the cheapest one with Wi-Fi, 8GB RAM and 128GB storage offers the best value for your money. Let me explain. Most people use a tablet at home where they always have a Wi-Fi connection. Even if they do travel somewhere, then they always have their smartphone at hand from which they can easily create a hotspot and connect the tablet. And as for the storage part, well, I am happy to say that the OnePlus Pad Go comes with expandable storage up to 1TB. So you can easily get a 256GB micro SD card and get all the storage you want. So now that we know that the base model is the one you should get. So let's take a look at its design and how good this tablet is in day-to-day -day usage. In terms of design, the OnePlus Pad Go looks similar to the OnePlus Pad with a few changes here and there. Both devices have the same 7 is to 5 display aspect ratio. The OnePlus Pad comes in a halo green color and in a single tone design. Meanwhile, the OnePlus Pad Go is available in twin mint color with a dual tone design. The OnePlus Pad is slightly larger in height and width and it's also thinner and heavier than the OnePlus Pad Go. OnePlus Pad also features a slightly larger screen with a higher resolution and pixel density compared to the Pad Go. Both devices use capacitive touchscreens but have different types of LCDs. Apart from these visual changes, both tablets feel similar to hold. Although this one feels more compact due to its low weight. It doesn't matter if you're watching movies, YouTube or reading comics, holding the OnePlus Pad Go is super easy and because of the dual tone design, it doesn't slip from your hand that easily. Now, I have been using this without a cover since many weeks now and I haven't dropped it a single time. Now, neither the OnePlus Pad or the OnePlus Pad Go come from the factory with a screen protector, but most OnePlus smartphones do, be it the entry-level Nord or the top-spec OnePlus 11. Nonetheless, it is a great tablet and it has neat design and feels easy to hold. All in all, good job OnePlus. Next up is performance and this section is kind of a mixed bag. You see the OnePlus Pad Go features a MediaTek Helio G99 SoC and at this point it is almost a 2 year old chip. On top of that it is positioned as a mid-range chip with focus on efficiency. And for the first time the kind of performance I was expecting is exactly the kind of performance the OnePlus Pad Go has delivered. For instance, day-to-day -day operations are smooth, but that's only when you do not open too many apps. Now, the chip on this is really not great at multitasking and you will see it, especially when switching between multiple apps. Also, things are not as snappy on this tablet because whenever you open any app or press the back button or press the menu button, the UI will take a slight second to respond. Don't get me wrong, this is not any kind of system freeze or system overload, but more like a general lag. So performance, in a nutshell, is good for general use. Not good for multitasking and seriously not good if you want to play heavy games like Genshin Impact. In terms of battery life, you can easily expect 6 to 7 hours of screen on time with full brightness. The 8000 mAh battery is big enough to last 2 days with moderate use and around 70% screen brightness. But before I move on, there are a few things that I want to bring to your attention. 
Firstly, the Oxygen OS is smooth. It is also very clean in terms of layout and notification and you won't see any ads anywhere on the tablet, which is very nice. But you do have these uninstallable apps and they just won't go away as there is no way to delete them. Secondly, for some reason, this has no headphone jack. Like, come on OnePlus, what are you doing? Next up is something which is very weird and I think makes the overall experience of using this tablet slightly worse and that is the lack of any kind of haptics. Like when you're typing or when you're pressing the buttons, there is no haptic feedback. You do get sound but no vibration and I think that really takes the fun out of using this thing. And it is a shame because it is a really good device which has really nice value for money. Even the onboard camera on this thing is pretty decent for a tablet under 20,000 and the video capabilities are also good enough. You're not going to be shooting any professional content on it and OnePlus isn't expecting you to do so because that's not this device is for. What this thing is for is entertainment and that it nails very well. The screen is bright enough but it does have a bit of glare, so that's something you have to take into account. Lakin, the speakers on this thing are really good. They are loud, they are crisp and also quite bassy. Here, take a listen. There are four speakers in total and they do not offer surround sound but they do their best to offer a more lifelike sound stage. So that was the OnePlus Pad Go review. And here's its digit rating. It really is one of the best tablets under Rs 20,000 in India and it is good but not perfect. It has its share of pros and cons and I have done my best to highlight them. Still, if you think there's something I left, then do let me know it in the comment section below. Until then, this is me, Yatnesh Dubey. You were watching Digit and I will see you in the next one.